Hello and welcome to Languagecraft for episode 15 of Let's Time Lapse. Now today we're starting by flying above the small fishing port that we built in the last episode, with its big lighthouse to the right. And just in front of us, we have the neighborhood that the team and I built a few episodes ago. Now the season is really coming along. Episode 15 out of 20, and we have houses and streets all over the place. I mean, you could almost get lost in here. Now as you might have seen, the church was glitching a bit. My shaders have started glitching for who knows what reason, with chunks flickering here and there, uh, maybe some of the chunk loading, uh, multi-core or something like that. Anyway, definitely a f problem that I will have to solve in the near future, and don't hesitate to tell me if you have any ideas as to what is going on. So I didn't get a chance to do this episode sooner because I was working on the play and build contest. If you missed them, four cinematics came out that I'm very proud of as a director, and for which the builders of four different build teams worked extremely hard. The result is astounding. Anyway, today we're working on the commandery with Mimi Lala, and we updated the layout we have done for the monastery, and we're ready to get building. Now the first important point is that we want the whole structure to look like a patchwork. Make it seem as though pieces were added on later, here and there. So we want to break the symmetry on purpose. It's very well protected, being on the inside of the monastery with limited access. So what is this room? Well, there's a big difference between a monastery and a commandery. And that's money. So this room is the vault, where all the treasures and money are stored. So the difference between a monastery and a commandery is that the monastery is isolated and only needs a little bit of money to keep itself going, while the commandery's aim is to make as much money as possible to finance their order. They have a lot of fields and go on crusades and things like that to find valuable items while pillaging. And one interesting thing concerning crusades that I discovered with Oriendo is that crusades were a lot more common than we might think. People think that they only took place in the Holy Land, but those are only the crusades that we hear and learn about. That's what I studied anyway. Such and such crusade from this day to that day, and so on. I think there were nine of them for the main crusades? I used to know them all by heart, dates and popes and all that. But these were not the only crusades going on. There were a lot against the Slavic people for one. And a little quiz for the fun of it. Apart from the fact that they would punish the infidels, you know why popes called for crusades among the countries that followed Christianity? I'll give you the answer next time, and maybe I'll even throw in some steam keys for the winners. It is Christmas after all. So anyway, at the moment we're building along the side of the monastery. In theory, a monastery is in the middle of nowhere, and monks can't even speak except in the cloister. But a commandery is very different, in that it's a much more public place that people can go to. In our case, we'll try to bring both aspects together, as we'll talk about later. Now the room we're currently working on is something I should have done in the episode on the monastery, but I wasn't too sure what it was, and so I asked Oriendo to explain so that I could do it now. It's the chapter house, where the chapter, that's to say all the monks, come together for meetings. It's oriented towards the east, toward the rising sun in Jerusalem, just like a church, it sort of looks like an amphitheater, something that one might find in a university, in Congress, or even ancient Rome or Greece. Now this is where all the important decisions are taken for the monastery and the commandery. Our build is a bit peculiar since we're mixing the two concepts. After all, let's time lapse is historically accurate, but we do take some liberties just for the fun of it or whatever looks best in Minecraft. Among other things, rather than having something that is entirely open to the public, only a small part of it is. We're currently building stables. For these and everything around, outsiders can come. They can enter a few rooms to conduct business transactions, among other things. Maybe they can even go into the chapter house. But probably not. It is the center of the monastery, after all. But everything else is private. The chapel, the bell tower, the cloister. Well, actually, commanderies usually don't have cloisters, that's one of our liberties, but it is a monastery as well. Anyway, only the monks can access all of this. So the stables for horses were made for several different reasons. For trade, of course, it's important to be able to move a lot of cargo. 
but a commandery has a military aspect. Very few had an actual role in defense. They didn't look like a fortress, um, although in the east, sort of, when you got close to the Holy Land. But you still need some people to escort the money to and from the building. So these people are knights, and knights need horses, hence the stables. So earlier on, I told you about the fact that getting money was one of the goals of a commandery. It might cultivate fields with peasants, or agriculture in general, and deal with general trade. Now we decide to build a grape plantation exclusively, to make wine. We're leaving the trees as they are, but keep in mind that the very last episode of the series will have us revamp the whole look and feel of the trees, which will help us to cut off the commandery from the village. But the grapes, that's the reason why we have a storehouse and a wine press. On the other side of the path, we have a dovecote, where pigeons are housed. This is how the commandery can exchange messages. As we've said before, it's part of an order, it's not the main building of the order. Which is why it's a priory, not an abbey. It takes orders. And this dovecote enables it to receive those orders from the abbey. And I suppose, you know, tell it how much it made and uh, when it will be sending the next shipment, something like that. Now there we go, as we rise up, we can really see how big the building grew to be. From a simple monastery to the commandery it is now. I love the fact that it's no longer symmetrical. It's no longer a perfect rectangle. The roofs are particularly messy, and you might have noticed that in a few shots I spent the entire time working on the roofs. The ones atop the chapter house were a little complicated and took some time to wrap my head around. Always try again until you're happy with the results, rather than keeping your first try. The end result will be so much better. Now here's the storehouse for the wine, with tanks filled with obsidian, which is black in this pack, but purple if you look at it with the basic resource pack once you've downloaded the map. And here are the stables that we talked about. Something we couldn't show you are the interiors. We made specific rooms that are not furnished for the commander, things like that. And here is the only interior shot, the chapter house, where all the monks convene. Above, in a sort of gallery, is the library, because it's also very important and quite central. Now all the vines take up quite a lot of room because they enable the monks to survive after all. They finance the whole commandery. You'll be able to see all the interiors when you download the map at the end of the season. There's a refectory, a kitchen, a dormitory, and so on. And you'll be able to furnish them if you want. As usual, we end the episode with a map of the village. And as you can see, I've given up on showing the whole village. It's become too big. So every time we'll focus on the subject of the current episode. The commandery juts out everywhere which is exactly what we wanted. And once the trees are in place, it really will be cut off from the village. Now, once again, a big thank you to Mimi Lala who built this with me. We had a blast, just like when we did the monastery, and I, I think we really w work well together. As for you, well, thank you for watching, and don't hesitate to look at all the great cinematics that came out on the channel recently. Uh, I'm really proud of them, of all the work that was put in by everyone. Um, they're some of the best cinematics we've ever produced. And last but not least, is this festive time of year, a very Merry Christmas to you and a Happy New Year, and I'll see you again in 2015. Bye-bye.